Welcome to this tutorial on mastering digital illustration in Photoshop. In this video I'll walk you through the entire process from drawing the line art to applying flat colors and finishing with shadows and lighting. We'll be working on an illustration of cyclist Mathieu van der Poel and by the end you'll be able to create your own digital artwork. Let's get started. Let's start by creating the line art for our illustration. First open a new file in Photoshop. I'll be working with RGB color mode at 300 pixels per inch for high resolution digital artwork with a white canvas as the background. I leave the background layer locked and create a new layer on top for the rough sketch. I prefer using a light color like blue or gray for the sketch. It makes it easy to distinguish from the final lines. On this new layer I sketch out the basic structure of the illustration. Don't worry too much about making it perfect here. The goal is to lay out the proportions and composition for the final line art. Once the sketch is ready, I create another new layer above the sketch for the final line art. This way I can draw over the sketch while keeping the rough guide underneath visible for reference. Next grab the brush tool beyond the keyboard. For line art I always use a hard etched brush set to 100% hardness and 100% opacity. This ensures sharp crisp lines that will give your illustration a polished look. I mainly use pure black for the line art to ensure clarity and contrast. Start tracing over the sketch carefully, keeping the strokes clean and deliberate. I like to zoom in as needed to refine the lines and add detail, ensuring everything looks sharp. While I'll typically use only black for the line art, for this illustration I use some grey colors to draw the logo on the helmet. This subtle difference in tone helps differentiate the logo from the rest of the line work without overwhelming the overall design. So in the case of logos or specific elements, using grey is a useful technique. After finishing the line art I sometimes need to adjust the opacity of certain lines. Here's how I do it. With the line art layer selected, click on the layer mask icon in the layers panel. This allows you to adjust the opacity of certain lines without affecting the rest of the drawing. Select the brush tool with a soft edged brush. Now paint on the layer mask with grey to gently fade certain lines. For example, lines in areas where I want a lighter touch, like around highlights or shadows, can be softened this way. Now that we've completed the line art, it's time to move on to the next step, applying the flat colors. Alright, now that we've finished the line art, let's move on to adding the flat colors. First, head over to the layers panel and create a new layer for the flat colors. I recommend renaming this layer color to stay organized. With this layer selected, change the blending mode from normal to multiply. This will allow you to color beneath the line art while keeping the lines visible and intact on top. Next, choose the brush tool, be on the keyboard. For flat colors, I prefer using a hard edged brush with the hardness set to 100%. This gives you clean sharp edges and ensures your colors look solid and professional. Make sure the brush opacity is set to 100% as well. This guarantees solid color application without any transparency. Perfect for laying down your base colors. Now start filling in the areas with the base colors, working inside the line art. The multiply mode will keep the line art visible while the colors apply underneath. Use a hard edged brush for precise clean fills and remember, at this stage we're focusing purely on laying down flat base colors. No shadows or highlights yet. For the logos on the cycling gear we need to handle them separately so they don't blend with the flat colors. For the logos create a new layer above the flat colors layer. It's important that the logo layer is above the flat colors. This prevents the logos from blending with the base colors and ensures they stay clear. The layer for the logos should remain in the normal blending mode, unlike the flat colors, which are set to multiply. This will ensure that the logo colors appear exactly as intended without blending into the base colors. Using the brush tool again, I select the hard etched brush with 100% opacity. For precise logo details, I usually reduce the brush size to 3 pixels or to 5 pixels depending on the complexity of the logo. Carefully draw the logos on the gear. 
Here's a tip, if you need to draw detailed or complex logos, zoom in closely to maintain precision. You can also use vector shapes or imported graphics if needed, but hand drawing gives you more control over customization. Once your base colors and logos are in place, we can move on to the next step, adding shadows and lighting to really bring the illustration to life. Here's our base illustration without any lightning effects. To begin, we'll add harsh shadows. First, make a new layer above your color layer. Change the blending mode of this new layer to multiply. Use a soft edged brush. Set your foreground color to a darker shade, resembling the shadow you want to create. Carefully paint over the areas where you want shadows following the light direction. Fine tune the realism by reducing the opacity of the shadow layer. This step allows the shadows to blend more naturally with the underlying colors. Additionally, you can use layer masks to fine tune the shadows appearance and blend them seamlessly with the underlying color. With the shadow layer selected, click on the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Make sure the mask thumbnail on the shadow layer is selected. Ensure you're using a soft edged brush. Select a mid-tone grey as your foreground color. Use the grey color to paint over the areas of the mask where you want to subtly reduce or soften the shadows. Lastly, we'll add a backlight effect. Make a new layer above all other layers. Choose a bright color that complements the scene and the light direction. Ensure you're using a soft edged brush for a smooth transition. Carefully paint along the edges or areas where the backlight would naturally hit your illustration. Once the backlight is painted, adjust the opacity of the layer itself until it looks natural and enhances the illustration without overpowering it. The backlight accentuates the character making it pop and adding a cinematic touch. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial helped, subscribe for more pro tips.